My name is Daryl O'Keefe. I'm the Senior Vice President for the Fix Network here in Canada. Been with Fix Auto now for about nine and a half years and very, very excited and happy to take on this new role. Very similar to what I've been doing for the last nine and a half years, focusing on you know, industry development, franchise development, vendor partners, insurance interactions, really just growing the business. But now instead of just focusing on the province of Ontario, I'll be able to work from coast to coast with my colleagues, helping coach them and bring extra value really listening to the customer and seeing where we can apply that value. I think the, the key, I don't know if I can confine it to three or make it three perfectly, but really is to listen to the customer. And it's a complex thing because we live in a world, insurance vendors are a big customer of ours. Our strategic partners, the shops that do work are customers of ours. So we work in a unique matrixed industry where there's a lot of pressures on all sorts of facets. I believe my key responsibility here is to listen to those voices ensure that we're truly identifying what the need of all these folks are, and then step back and look at the resources that we have, our incredible ability to train and develop people within our network, the training facilities we've developed, the training, learning, and development programs that are run through those training centers are fantastic opportunities for our existing partners to upskill themselves. At the same time, I think we'd be remiss in a responsibility and an opportunity if we didn't look at those as also opportunities for recruitment and development of new talent. Now, when we first developed those, it was interesting because pre-pandemic, we were looking to Canadian naive entrants into our industry to bring them in and train up new technicians and bring new franchise partners in. Post-pandemic, it's a bit of a different world and we find now that we're gonna to have to pivot a little bit. I believe wholly that there's a short, long-term difference as to what we can do. I believe short-term, we need to turn back to what made Canada great in the first place. I believe foreign recruitment, bringing folks from other parts of the world, we'll have to learn the markets, we'll have to assess where to go and what the best opportunities are for both the potential recruit and for the franchise partners. But I think that's a short-term opportunity for us. And using our training centers to then validate the skill sets that are coming from different parts of the world because expectations are different, cars are different. When we bring them in, we can validate their skills in our training centers and if necessary, upskill and sort of regionalize the expectations for repair processes and procedures and then put them into our facilities ready to hit the ground running. There are a number of reasons why an independent shop would still look to join our network. It might seem initially that we have coverage across the country, but the fact is there's still a great deal of opportunity in all of our business units. Think about collision. It's a very, very complex situation with many, many aspects of relationships. We bring scale to a smaller operation where they can compete with a potential MSO in the marketplace with the same robust buying power, the same opportunity for training, the same opportunity for relationships, even take advantage of the larger network's opportunity for say, employee benefits. We look to retain and recruit employees, but as a smaller independent business, it's a little bit difficult to offer the same services and benefits that a larger entity can. A smaller entity can take advantage of that while still retaining ownership of their independence. My new role as Senior Vice President of Canada for the Fixed Network, it's a bit of a domino effect because obviously we've just uh, announced that Sylvain Sagan has taken on the role of President of the Fixed Network Canada. To help support Sylvain and his efforts across the country, they've decided to add a layer of management to help backfill and take some responsibility so we can better service our, our customer base, which is broad and quite deep. Remember, 10 years ago, it was a much smaller, simpler business. The fixed network was some 200 shops across Canada, and that was it. Now, we are some 500 across three unique business units. We have the collision business with ProColor and Fix Auto. We have the mechanical aftermarket with Speedy Auto Service. We also have glass repair and replace with Novus. This is a much more layered approach, so to think that we could still manage it with the same structure we had before was just not possible. Through the pandemic, we realized and had a chance to step back, reassess how best to apply our resources and restructure to address that. So this will give me an opportunity to take the sensibilities that we've had over the last 10 years in the province of Ontario and just add more service, add more listening, add more connection to our customer base across the country. And I'm really excited to do that. So the, the recruitment of talent to our network, remember we're in a unique situation post pandemic. The world, and this isn't unique to the automotive aftermarket, it's not unique to collision, it's not unique to Canada. 
It's a global skilled trade shortage that everyone is feeling. So what we need to do is it's, it's a layered approach. I'd spoken short term about foreign recruitment to maybe help supplement the, the capacity issues we have in terms of human capacity now. But long term, we have to plant the seeds. We need to reach out to government. We need grassroots efforts so that facilities are also talking to their local government levels about what the needs are. And the needs are exposure. We need to get in front of young people sooner with a more robust message about the amazing opportunities that are in this industry. We just listened to Hod Lipson talk today about the changes that artificial intelligence, automation and robotics are going to bring to the workforce. But his learned perspective is that this is not going to impact the guys that are doing the work on the car, on the shop floor. In fact, it's going to bring more opportunities for that level. And in that, with more opportunity is the, uh, you know, the earning potential, the career potential. And uh, I think the future is quite bright. We need to share that message so that they understand that. If you're in a business and a career path that is data-driven, that is number-driven, the truth is you could be replaced by artificial intelligence and a computer. If you're servicing, repairing, rebuilding automotive technology in the field, I think you have a bulletproof situation for the future.